module in which we have to see the continuation part of the our lectures those are the adaptive dynamic programming and temporal difference learning so starting from the our important part that we have already discussed that is a passive learning so if you remember the passive learning if you have some little bit idea then you have seen direct identity estimation we have seen and how we can calculate it so uh, today we will see this topic step by step but before that uh, we're talking about the active learning because adaptive dynamic programming and temporal difference learning this will help to understand about the passive learning so a uh, student asked me the question from uh, uh, from another day so what is the actual difference between the passive and active learning see now we are seeing the direct utility estimation adaptive dynamic programming and temporal difference learning these are the different methods three different methods which are the part of the passive learning and after that we need to look the active learning but a student asked me sir can you explain the difference between the both kind of the learning so i'm just repeating the my statement once again because we have already discussed this point in my previous slide previous lecture in a slide so i am speaking once again over here for your betterment passive learning means the agent acts based on the fixed policy it means in the passive learning uh, we have to follow the fixed policy as we have designed to implement the our reinforcement learning model and this is a fixed policy this is a pie which is showing to us that you are talking about the optimal policy and because n number of the policies you have chosen the one policy that is a part of the optimum policy that is represented by the our pi symbol and tries to learn the how good the policy is by observing the world go by so analogs to we can say the policy evolution in the policy iteration so in the passive learning we have to follow a internal concept of the reinforcement learning and i'm speaking once again reinforcement learning is more deeply concerned where you can found the lots of the topic so but uh, as per our curriculum we are looking at the only small small part so we can learn the proper so if we're talking about the we need to choose the fixed policy or we need to decide the optimum policy is that optimum policy so that can be done by the our policy iteration approach this keep in mind this one so when talking about the active learning so active learning is saying to us the agent but what is the agent you know agent environment okay and uh, some rules and policies okay so these are the different terms we have already discussed into the previous lecture and now talking about the active learning the agent attempts to find an optimal that you are talking about the least good method or that is we can say policy by exploring the different actions in the world so in the environment the action which is to be performed by the is a and so what is good what would be the optimal policy dynamically and that is to be done by the active learning and that is the point we have to keep in mind in the passive learning we have the fixed policy and while a dynamic learn, uh, dynamic policy we have to determine under the active learning so that is the point we have to keep in mind and what we have the point that is the mdp so what is mdp if you remember the my words mdp can anyone tell me what is mean by the mdp you just tell me anyone who is remembering this word mdp yes tell me so maybe recordation process can you repeat once again some mark out decision process yeah super good so uh, uh mark of decision process uh, this point we have to discuss under the direct utility estimation point and before explaining the direct utility estimation i have already discussed about the, this point that is mdp so mdp is a more important point to understand into the passive as well as the active learning but in the active learning it is more desirable topic or more desirable need where we have to use this kind of the approach for learning so that is we have the active learning so this is a little bit uh, difference we have to keep in mind as per the curriculum so after that we have the adaptive dynamic programming so what we have the point so adaptive dynamic programming i have written over here in the summarized way we can learn the properly and we will not uh, go into deeply manner or hard mathematics over here 
because uh, we need to touch its important point to understand the what is the role of the reinforcement learning in the machine learning so adp i am just saying to over here and that is known as the adaptive dynamic programming it is smarter method of we can say it is a more smarter than the uh, dike utility estimation and you can see over here in the dike utility estimation and in the dike estimation in the dike esti uh, utility estimation it runs a uh, many trials if you remember this point then we have seen this approaches and if i continue this point so you can easily identify over here what we have discussed in the that uh now model of the environment by estimating the utility of the state as some of the reward for the being in the state and the expected discount reward of the being in the next state and that is to be identified this equations where you can see u is what u is a utility and pi is what you can observe over here pi is a optimal policy and s is the state so on the state which optimal policy we are following under the dike utility estimation so this is the equations and from this point you can understand rs is means not talking about the reward of the being in the state as and the other parameter as alpha alpha we can need to keep in mind this is the most important point where alpha is saying to us we will uh, we will focus on the uh, calculating the optimum reward so what is the reward we are getting through the other part from the our um, uh, many trials that is the point we are getting over here and other factors we are associated over here like the gamma so gamma is what you can observe over here this is a discount factor so all these things we have already discussed but in the summarized way we can say adaptive dynamic programming is required as a second method and it is saying to us and it is saying to us Uh, it is saying to us uh, uh, we have to follow the adaptive dynamic programming so adaptive dynamic programming is totally inspired by the dynamic programming approach if you remember the data structure where we have used the eight quiz problem so those student who have studied data structure uh, not as a data structure um add a subject so where we have to use the various uh, uh programming uh, uh dynamic programming concept where we found that eight quiz problem is more important problem which is to be used by the dynamic program same concept we are inspiring inspiring from the uh, from the our eight quiz problem we are inspiring uh the idea here that is dynamic programming so from this perspective you can easily understand uh the adaptive dynamic programming can be solved by the value iteration algorithm so what is mean by the value iteration algorithm that is the point we have to keep in mind i am remembering the my words over here in the dike utility estimation we have used a wise utility but in the case of the dynamic adaptive programming or sorry we can say the adaptive dynamic programming or adp method we have to use the value iteration algorithm but let us understand why this algorithm is more important so the points are written over here the algorithm converts a fast but can become quite costly to compute the large state space and i will tell you don't worry about this part value iteration algorithm how it will work don't worry with, a, with an example i will tell you so from this point um, okay uh, from this point i will tell you each and everything in detail manner and the uh, adp is a model actually adp is what that is i am speaking once again adaptive dynamic programming is a model of the reinforcement learning just like the supervised learning we have seen the various model in which we have the so many algorithms or so many methods so same things here we have the various method which is to be applied to it's uh, into a model of the reinforcement learning so adp is a model under into the passive learning so adp is a model based approach and require the transition model of the environment and this model is saying to us it is a model free and model free why we can say model free see uh, when we have a term that is a model free or other things so uh, what is saying to us you are required to follow the steps properly 
and why i'm saying over here why we need to follow the steps of our lead it means model free approach is saying to us you are required to follow the fixed policy in this case you are not to follow you are not following any uh, of any uh, dynamically or we can say any uh, run time based policy the policy which is fixed that is to be used over here so that is a model free means means the model is totally free from the uh, opting the new model or new policy dynamically the fix we have used we are using and inspired from the that concept we have another model or learning that is known as the temporal reference learning and this is the example of the passive learning as well so i am speaking once again to all the people listen carefully over here in the passive learning we have the three different methods one is a direct utility estimation next one is adaptive dynamic programming and this adaptive dynamic programming is totally based on the value iteration algorithm and how value iteration algorithm will work so i will tell you don't worry and adp model is uh, is a part of the model free approach and we have a third method that is the temporal reference learning so it is again this would be the part of the passive learning so from this perspective let us understand value iteration method what is value iteration method uh, uh, you can understand over here this is not mentioned in your syllabus but it is hidden into your syllabus as over here what is mean by the value iteration algorithm so when i am speaking something over here value iteration algorithm it means you people are required to understand if i am asking something into the examination adaptive dynamic programming so why because this is a based on the value iteration algorithm so value iteration algorithm we must understand step by step and this is the equations we have to keep in mind properly so what is the point or what is the thing we have written over here so please listen carefully compute the value in the value iteration algorithm what we have so far this topic value iteration is a part of the adaptive dynamic programming and we are saying over here once again it is totally inspired by the our q uh, q uh, eight pins problem as we have seen the our ada subjects so compute the value functions iteratively so what we have to calculate we have to determine its objective function or value functions iteratively and under the bellman equation using the dynamic programming so if you remember the my words i am speaking again again dynamic programming so dynamic programming uh, uh, is also followed by the bellman equation as well and here we have the uh, our equation that is a vk plus 1 vk plus means we are talking about the value next value actually so on the state next value how we can calculate it by using the wellman equation using dynamic programming so this is the equation which is known as the wellman equation for the dynamic programming so vk plus 1 i am speaking once again vk plus 1 means the value at the next uh, state what we can get and what is the uh, equation it is it is tends to next a and summation of the s dash s dash is a new space a state space we can say and e p s dash s comma a and r s comma s and gamma v k s so this vk uh, vk s dash so this is the equations we have to just remember only i am repeating once again these are only the equations we have to keep in mind only nothing else and uh, i am not going into deeply manner how we are getting this uh, part or how we are derivative this equation so if we are going through that part again we need a lot of the classes and that is not part or even even these these topics are not a uh, in detail manner of the our syllabus so we have to look into this matter to the only um, scratch mode what is mean by the value iteration so let us understand the value iteration method by an example okay so now uh, there is a maze and this maze means uh, we have the maze and uh, which is to be followed by the 4 by 4 maze so you can observe over here the maze exit point is given on the left top corner okay with the reward of the minus 1 so when you are uh, moving uh, into the maze into deeply manner so you will have to uh, calculate the its reward value in the negative term value or no in the negative way so problem is we have the we have the zero zero is saying to us you have to move out from this cell only and now uh, at the v1 so v1 is the our step that is saying to us on the state space 
we have the zero zero it means you can move out from any one of the point but how we can calculate so b2 is the our next point where minus minus 1 i am putting over here so now this is a iterative process so it is a iterative process so minus 1 is saying to us you can move out from this point now we have the minus 2 so it means uh, after applying the iterative process we are getting this maximum value in the terms of the negative way that is the minus minus so in the minus 1 to minus 2 we have so you can easily observe over here i am speaking over here now let me explain this diagram with my arrow symbol please please see this diagram carefully uh, i may ask this question to the examination so please listen over here so now now what we have problem we have the problem 4 by 4 uh, maze or we can say matrix we have like this one so v1 is the our first step first steady process where i am putting the 0 0 as initial values so from this point to from this point i can move so that would be the my reward that is a minus 1 this minus 1 and this minus 1 is not a reward so what i have to do i have to shift b2 into b2 to b3 so in the b3 what i am getting from minus 1 to 0 i can easily get out or i can easily exit so uh, internally i can say the distance we are measuring so minus 1 to 0 we are getting over here minus 2 yes to how many steps we have to complete from this step and then this step okay so here we have the minus 2 and now we have to update the its cell value or update its uh, maze column value each and every time and uh, respectively column or row wise. Now, from minus 1 to this point, so this is the correct distance we are getting. Minus 2 to we have because we have to move through the two steps. So we are getting out over here, no shoe. And minus 3, we are getting the correct steps over here because we can move out without any doubt direction or without any doubt. Okay. But from this point, you can. But in this case, just uh, uh, I am speaking like over here. Suppose I need to move out from this point. So minus three two, I can move over here. One, two, two, three. It means minus three is not a justifiable value, and that should be updatable. So that should be updatable. So how we can update? We can update this value by the next iterative process. Now, this is uh, from this point. If I try to move uh, one. 2, 3, no. Again, I am not able to move out. So, these, these values or some of the values of its maze will be required to update. So, after the iterative process, after the long iterative process, we can found B7. So, B7 is the best example where you can see we have its updated reward value. So, minus 1. Okay. You can observe over here, like I am just choosing the different color for explaining purpose. Suppose uh, this is a minus 5. So from this point to if I move or if I need to exit, then how I can exit? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Yes. So this minus 5 is correct value. Let us check this value from the other point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I'm choosing this path as well, so I can easily move out from the mind base. So that is a simple example. This example is saying to us value iterative algorithm. So it means by using this formula, we have to update the its value again, again to get the update values to move out the or to get the reward. That is the point. So here we have one value represented by the minus one value. So we are choosing this value. Suppose we have the positive, so okay, we can write the positive value. No issue. So this is what this is the value iterative process this concept will be applicable into the adaptive dynamic programming so dynamically what we are changing actually by the iterative process we are changing the some value and that is known as a value iterative value iteration process that is the reason it is known as the adaptive dynamic programming so adaptive dynamic programming i am repeating once again it is totally based on the your important topic that is the value iterative process. So from this point, I can say, uh, do you have any doubt over here? The fundamental point to understand what do you mean by the value iterative process?
No, sir, no doubt. Okay, so uh, thank you. So this is a point uh, which is saying to us in the maze we can exit from the left corner. Okay, you can uh, um, you can choose any one of the corner and from that corner you have to just identify what the value you are picking as a reward or or uh, the feedback you can see. So from this perspective we can start the moving and keep in mind if I'm choosing the six values, like the a student can ask me like this, sir, uh, suppose I'm choosing six values. So from six value you can determine what is the number of the steps I have to move from the uh, move out from the my maze. So I am speaking like this one. I am choosing the different color for your betterment. See uh, this one. one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So after the six steps, I can move, easily move out. I can take this step from this direction as well. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So it means this minus six is a good value, or we can say correct value for moving out the our maze. That is the point. So value iterative process is a. I'm repeating once again. It is a, a totally important concept for the adaptive dynamic for programming. And adaptive dynamic programming is a part of the part of the passive learning. So far, we are not discussing about the active learning. We are discussing about the passive learning. So let us understand this concept right now in the continuation way. So this method does take advantage of the constant and the value many equations. So what we uh, what what is the value many equations? We have already discussed. And basically, this model will help to learn the transition model T and reward the function R. And based on the underlying MDP and MDP, as uh, the one student told the name of this one right now, currently the Markov descent process, and it provides the optimum policy that is a pi. So by using the T and R, so what is the T? T is the transition model with, uh, along with the its reward function R. And what is the reward function? As I am speaking once again, reward function means the this R state. So based on the state. If you are getting the some reward, and how we are getting the reward by the function, that function is known as the RS, or we can say it is known as the reward function on the state. And we can perform the policy evolution. So, what the policy we are applying over here for learning purpose? That is the point we have over here. That is the value iterative process. So, value iterative process will take an advantage to learn the concept properly, and it will use it will use Wellman equation using the dynamic programming, and this is the equation just we have to keep in mind for explaining the value traders process. So that is the reason. Okay. So now uh, let us understand the or recall the policy evolution method. So because as my early slide of the today's lecture, I told you the passive learning will use uh, and it is analogs to. It is analogs to policy evolution in policy iteration. So if I'm saying that in the policy iteration approach, we have to use a policy evolution. So let us understand what is mean by the policy evolution concept. So I have written the in simple way. In the policy evolution, computes the value function. And what is the value function? Value function will be calculated. Value function will be generated by the value iterative algorithm. And for a policy pi, and this policy will be optimum policy using the Wellman equation. So we have used the Wellman equations for dynamic using the dynamic programming. It means we are using the value iterative process or value iterative algorithm. So we are getting the value function, and this value function will be calculated by under concept, and that is known as the policy evolution. So what is the evolution criteria for the policy for the adaptive dynamic programming? Uh, so, what is the policy evolution you are using? That is the algorithm we have the value iterator algorithm. That is the reason we are understanding this concept. So, now let us understand the, my point right now once again. So, let us recall the concepts of policy evolution. So, what is the policy evolution? I told you over here. In the policy iteration, involves solving utility for each state if policy pi i is followed. 
so here i am talking about the not the single policy we can have the many policies so that could be optimum policy but we need to choose only the one optimum policy one policy so this can be understood by the equation that equation is known over known as over here u u means we are talking about the utility utility pi on the state as and that is a equal to r so this r s is our reward function on the state as plus gamma gamma is the discount factor in summation of the as just as just is would be your new phase you know or a new designed uh, space or state uh, put it by the optimum policy into t a uh, t is what t is our transition model if you remember the previous slide t is a transition model is a point okay t is a transition model we are getting so s comma pi s comma as just multiplied by u pi as this so what is the new space or new state we are getting that we to be multiplied over here that is followed by the utility phase and t is i am speaking once again that is a transition model and just go to the previous model previous part so you can observe over here so after the value utility process in the apply in the adaptive dynamic programming you will have to use the two important point one is transition model another one is reward function this this can be identify the in our equation that is that is this equation i am repeating once again rs is the reward function plus its transition model so transition model can be written by the equations here like this one to so gamma gamma is a discount factor summation of as just as is updated uh, space or updated states and uh, what you are getting ultimately you are getting the utility factor or utility value on the policy pi on the state as so that is a point we have to keep in mind and uh, if we, we are going to deeply manual because each and every model each and every concept uh, under the data structure and ada we have to check its uh, time complexity why right? because um, it is mandatory we have a lots of the methods but we need to choose only the math which method to, we have to choose the Simpler, sim, uh, simpler, or we can the simplest method, which gives us only the minimum time complexity. But uh, by uh, getting this point, we are getting the our time complexity that is order of the n, n cube. So that is a point, and this n is what n is saying to us number of the state. So suppose we have the thousand states. So definitely on uh, on based on this parameter, value iterative process will take much time for computation purpose. because the number of the states we have number of the states we have the in large volume that is the reason it can have the maximum complexity it can have the high complexity but this is only just idea we have to keep in mind so that is just idea about the value iterative attrition process or value iterative process so from this point uh, now uh, we have the this point so that is the point we have to keep in mind so from the previous uh, slide we have the same equations over here and what is this that is saying to us the agent needs to learn the transition model i as i told you what is mean by the transition model transition model is saying to us a model uh when you just try to update your values on the state by the applying the optimum policy okay so that is the model you are getting each and every time that is to be known as the updated thing so that is also known as a transition model and reward function rs it is also written over here as i told you so that is a point we have to keep in mind okay so let us understand this concept and now we have the question here so, uh, i was forget this point right now how do how do we learn these models so adaptive dynamic programming is saying to us by using the adaptive uh, uh, value iterative process how you can learn so let us understand this point right now over here this point is saying to us learning the reward function because you have decided the rewarding what would the reward that is a minus 1 if you are remember the uh, previous example then we have seen the reward we have decided minus 1 but how we can assign how, how we can allocate the its reward that is a point so learning the reward function that is a necessary point and why because it is easy and it is deterministic and whenever you need to whenever you need to see the new state that could be as this and it is store and observe the reward value from the its previous state that is the rs so from the previous state what the value just now that 
the example. So you can observe over here when we are updating the, you can observe over here, when we are updating the V value, this is value, uh, value iterative values, or we can say value, we are updating the next value. So initially we have a zero zero. Next we have the minus one one. Next we have the minus one and two two. And then we have updating values. So each and every time we are updating all these values and that is to be done by the our reward method or reward function. So the term is saying to us, what is the previous value which is hold by the, or uh, which is to be held by the our important uh, uh, reward function that is a minus two minus three. So from this perspective, each and every time you are just updating such values. So what is the previous state? So you can observe over here, previous state was the minus one or minus two. And now we are updating minus three. And now at the last BC one, we have the minus six as well. So with the help of the iterative process, you are updating the, updating it some values again, again. And that is to be known as a learning from the reward function. And that is known as the learning from the RS. That is the point we have written this word. And each and every time new student will keep the update information. It is stored and you observe the, what is the reward you are getting. And next we have the point, reward uh, learning from the transition model. Learning from the transition model is saying to us, if you remember the, the transition model, we are, what we have, you have, you have the S comma A as this. So A is what? S is what? Okay. And this as this is what? So you know each and every sense from this perspective, let us understand this concept by this point right now. Suppose uh, you are in the one, three column. You can observe over here. A, I'm just taking over here. S is a state, A is the action, and S just is the new state, okay? So my example is saying to us, if you are in the state S equal to one comma three, it means we are talking about the this state, right? One comma three. And third by the sum action, of course, following by the sum policies and actions, you are moving from S to S dash, then you can see you are executing, suppose you are executing right three times, then you are ending up the two comma three. Suppose after uh, taking the multiple or many iterative process uh, right three times again, again. So we are moving from this point two comma three. Then, then we have to write this statement. What is the value you are getting and what would be your next, what would be your next state? So from this point, then the theoretically or in the conceptually it is written over here, you are moving right three times, just like this example. Uh, I'm just uh, spreading with this point right now. Green line. Yeah. So, yes. So as to as this you are moving, one right time. Then uh, by uh, this point, you are again moving to the right side. So again, you are going back. Okay. You may come over here. You may come like this one. Again, you back one, two. Okay. Again, this one. Okay. So from this point, this is the, uh, uh, this cell is basically is not usable. Okay, so this is a, uh, uh, the build cell, you can see this is a not a usable. So if I'm moving the right side like again, 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 just like this one, uh, one like this one, just give me correct this one. Uh, one, two, okay, one, two, and and then, so you, after applying the uh, three right times, one, two, three, and then you may, your, your state may end up the as does. So that is point over here. That is point over here. We are moving, um, we are uh, moving uh, three uh, tries time to the right side and we are ending up the two comma three. Little better idea, we can move like this one. One and again you are back to this point, then again back to go like this one. So this this is trying to us you are twice you are multiplying the its state. 
it means previously what we have we had one we are on the one comma three and if i multiply it's a uh, it's a, we can say column by two so what we are getting we are getting two comma three that is why the words are written over here like you end up the s test equal to two comma three twice then t s is the our this s is we are talking about the this state and s dash is would be our the new state that is two comma three so what we are getting we are transiting our model information from s to s dash by applying some action so a is our action so this transition model is saying to us you need to keep the track of this how often you will get the state as this from the as given as so this is what this is the transition model and can be uh, uh, it can be more better it can be applied to some different algorithms some different rules we can do the its mod so transition model is not uh, only the applying the simple concept it can go to the hard and hard concept but for understanding purpose we have used two points so i am just coming to the my points over here learning the reward function and learning the transition model is important for understanding the adaptive dynamic programming because it is inspired by the value iterative process or value iteration um, uh, algorithm so we have seen this concept by example and now other like this all these equations we are using we are seeing and we have seen all these are the study equations and we are using only these equations for understanding purpose only we are not changing any other things we are not derivative this equation that is the point okay so this is the idea about the adaptive dynamic programming so adaptive dynamic programming is like this simple method so i am repeating once again to all the simple way adaptive dynamic programming use or uh, because it is more better than the directly estimation because in the directly estimation you will have to run again and again for getting the better result and you have seen this point uh, in the previous lecture we have to run the trials or we have to use our uh, concept again and again for getting the values but in the adaptive dynamic programming is totally based on the value iterative iteration method or algorithm and how we can understand we have seen this concept by this example now it follows the two important point it follows the two important point transition model and reward function so learning from the transition model and reward function is also required so let us understand this concept right like this one is it right here so all these values are the part of the our models only we are not using we are not uh, changing anything we are using the same things as we have seen to the equations only from these equations transition models and reward function should be because the utility what we are have from the state for okay, for applying the optimum policy on uh, in the our adaptive dynamic programming that is followed by the two important point one is the rs and this part uh, and the plus, after the plus part that is not a transition model and rs is i am speaking again reward function so that's why we have the two type of learning over here uh, is this okay uh, yes tell me any doubt or is this okay no sir okay so uh, as i told you um, uh, in the model free uh, what we have in the model free we are no need to estimate the transition model so in the temporal difference learning see what we have done um, in the transition model we have calculated under the adaptive dynamic programming okay so that is the point we have to keep in mind so it does not estimate the transition model so from the our previous slide what we have observed in the adaptive dynamic programming in the adaptive dynamic programming we have seen and we have observed the point that is the um, two important aspect will be applicable under the value iteration method or after generating the value iteration algorithm that is rs that is the reward function under the transition model so instead of doing the all sum over all successor so what you are doing observe over here you can observe over here total number of the all successor we are having so we are estimating see this is the point instead of doing the this sum over this sum over all successor only adjust the utility of the state based of the successor and observe in this trial 
so what we are doing in the summation part we are running many times so unnecessary uh, running the many times it better idea to just see the which successor or which part or which state we have to evaluate and we have to calculate such part only so this equations can be more better and that is under into the temporal difference learning now what is mean by the temporal difference learning temporal difference learning is saying to us we will not need to calculate all the values of the successor or the successor values means of the transitions model part and as well as the its new utility values we will not need to calculate it again again see suppose uh, uh, in this example we are moving from s to s dash but in this case we have to calculate or we have to calculate the other thing and we have to add on to all those things so why we are doing uh, all these activities unnecessarily you are taking or you are calculating the or you are going to the uh, uh, you are increasing the com complexity so why you are increasing complexity some some uh, parts we need to we need not to calculate but unnecessary we are calculating unnecessary that is the reason so rather than the focusing on those part we need to see what is the new state we have to get and what is the current state we are uh, we are on that state so from s to s dash we are moving so you need to focus only only those part only so rather than touching the other parts like over here one 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 two but in this case we have to cover that is a uh, to be resolved by the our temporal difference learning over here so we have the temporal difference learning where we have this equation and this is to be updated by like this one so transition model is not estimate the again again all those things which are not related to the its states okay that is the point that is a we can say model free so let us understand this concept by simple example over here and uh, here i have a simple example i am explaining in simple way suppose you see that u pi 1 comma 3 okay what is the value 0.24 or so 0.84 and we are getting the new value new state value see this is actually uh, i can say this value is belong to the s okay and this value is belong to the actually s this and now suppose you see that uh, the s value that is a utility value on the particular states we have the 1 comma 3 so we are getting the 0.84 it is given and uh, u pi 2 comma 3 is equal to 0.92 it is also given so after the first try keep in mind after the first try same uh, we have done to the diagonal estimation case now if the transition model is saying to us we are moving from the 1 comma 3 to 1 comma uh, 2 comma 3 and that is i have written over here as to as this you are moving when all the times then you will expect to the see that by using the previous equations u pi 1 comma 3 so u pi 1 comma 3 means utility value of the state 1 comma 3 by pi means we are applying the policy okay so on the utility value you, you are on the utility 1 comma 3 on the state 1 comma 3 you are applying the policy pi that is we have is equal to r comma 3 r is equal to r 1 comma 3 so now by this equations u pi as equal to r comma s just le let me uh, write correctly so uh, let me use this maze over here properly so you can understand better uh, just just uh, hold on yes yeah this is i'm uh, just uh, keeping this value over here for a better man and you can understand simply just uh, let me update the slide and just uh, after updating all these values
Yes. Yeah, I have done right now. Okay. So uh, now let me explain. This is the value we are trying to calculate, or we are need to. Uh, we are moving, or we are using the transition model, one comma three to two comma three. So what is the given over here? This is saying to us, you are using the one comma three. You are talking about one comma three. And this RS, this is reward function. Is reward function means this is state. So what is state? We have the one comma three. So this reward function would be the over one comma three. And this is already given over here. This is already given over here. So the point we have to keep in mind: we will not touch this part into the summation mode. We are not need to calculate. Why? As I told you, in the difference learning, it does not need to estimate the transition model. So I am removing the transition model part. Okay, that is the reason. I have removed this part right now, and this is the. It will be value of the updated uh, or new state that is the two comma three. So we have the this value right now. So I can write over here for understanding purpose. So two comma three value of the utility value we have given that is zero point nine two. So this value is written over here zero point nine two. And reward function, if you remember the my example of the from from the previous slide, the what is the reward value? When you are moving from one to one, one comma two. So, what is the value? What is the value? Negative zero point zero four. We have already known this part from the directory value. So, from the direct utility estimation example, you are known to this part the reward function or reward value from one state to another state. We are moving. Is already given in the negative zero point zero four. Okay, that is the point you have to keep in mind. So what we are doing, we are putting all these values, and after getting these values, zero point eight eight we are getting. So what is the given information? That is zero point eight four. So you can observe over here. If we try to calculate all these values, if we try to calculate these values, then you will see the little bit difference we are getting. This difference is known as. Uh, this difference is getting that in simple and minimum amount, so we can adjust, no issue. But we are getting the huge difference. Then we can say we have the huge difference. So that that it means you are you are not into the right direction, or you are not getting the correct utility value. So since you can observe over here the previous value which is given that is zero point eight four and we are getting of calculating the new values that is a zero point eight eight. So in the first trial, so that what we are getting over here, see this little amount of the information, so we can manage no issue. But when we are getting the huge difference, then what we have, it means at a time the temporal difference learning is not justify the our model properly. That is the point in the passive learning. The transition model is not required, and see the transition calculation was included to the work and the calculated part of in the first trial. So we will get the or we are getting the value zero point eight four, but we have removed such part. We are getting zero point eight eight, so little or minor difference we are getting, so no issue. We can manage. But due to this point of removing the transition model, and we are our model is totally free, and what we are doing, we are in, uh, reducing the time complexity as we are getting the high complexity that is. Order of the n cube from the adaptive dynamic programming. So in this case, at least we try we will try to reduce the our we will reduce the our time complexity. That is the reason. So to understand this uh, model in better way, consider real life analogy over here. I am just taking the real life example, and then you will happy to see the example. So uh, uh, the learning which is most and Famous learning in the reinforcement learning. We have the Monte Carlo learning. So in the Monte Carlo learning is saying to us, if suppose you have an annual examination or TWL examination, midterm examination like this one. So suppose I am giving the some assignment or activity on the last moment before the uh, main examination. You people are required to submit a two quiz, two live activity, two assignment, and two other things. And then definitely, what you will have, your performance will not. Be good. 
your performance will not be good in each and every activity and you will be in pressure so what i have just planned i can help you in between or in the uh, middle of the exam semester i can share the some activities on the before the examination i can conduct an quiz for your improve your performance so definitely you will learn you will do the study in a small small amount and you will get the marks in the slot wise slot by this time based to so, uh, one month back you have submitted the assignment one month uh, or or uh, we can say the 25 days you have submitted the activities 15 days back you have submitted the assignment and so on so or different activities so you were not on the pressure within the uh, these 30 days you have submitted some different different activities on time to time it means you first you have focused on the assignment next you have focused on the lab activity next you have focused on the quiz so you are not in the warden case then your performance was the found i have satisfactory or found without any doubt so at the moment at the last moment suppose before the examination i am sharing the different thing submit uh, within the two days so you will be under pressure then your performance will not be better that is the point over here and we are understanding this example over here in better way like this one so monte carlo ma'am learning is saying to us in the week 1 week 2 week 3 in a annual examination or we have the 12 months so under the 12 months we have approx uh, 52 weeks and definitely we will have the 52 weeks so the, uh, week wise i have just sharing some information in week 2 week you are just uh, submitting the assignment or different different things and at the last moment i will uh, evaluate each and everything without any doubt rather than doing this activity if uh, i am giving the some information on the some time basis like uh, uh, if a big to big uh, i'm just conducting something so rather than the big to big i'm focusing on the my groups of the students first group will submit the assignment on this date second group will submit the assignment on this date so if student are submitting in the group manner they can manage their group properly so i can communicate to the such group without any doubt and i can manage the thing properly and this is what is known as a temporal difference temporal difference means we are talking about the time differences so last uh, uh, 10 days back or we can say 10 days back i have just entertained to the my 10 students okay or two group we can say in the next in the next week or maybe the coming and this week i am just managing the two uh, two different uh, two different groups and this steps will go into the entire year so definitely i can uh, see the performance of the my student very well manner same example i can speak over here suppose a student asked me sir do you have any doubt then you can ask me over here so i can show my proof i have written very well, very well manner so okay but i know i i know who are you and uh, what your performance at the exam time i'm just observing your performance was not satisfactory it means in the previous activity you have done different thing into the or uh, you have participated into the different activities into cheating manner and that was not good idea so i into the examination it shows that you were not in well performance that is my point so i can communicate to the my groups into the year uh, day wise or week to week so that is my point here this is known as the temporal difference or this also known as time differences in the monte carlo learning we will assign the group and week to week i can manage the 50 students just like example over here suppose i have the 65 students and in the week one i am managing the 65 students in a day it is not possible so it is better idea to in a week one or a first week i am managing the two groups in the next week i am managing uh, i am managing the uh, next two groups and so and so so in the group wise i can communicate to student directly and uh, they can communicate me without any doubt so rather than the 65 student i am communicating to the five student six student or 10 student that is the my point and this is known as the temporal difference rather than the monte carlo differences so this is a better idea so that is a point so this is a simple example of the temporal differences so for the uh, examination purpose i can say over here you people are required to just follow this thing and i can give i will give the the policies the default values okay you just need to evil this point right now and you have to justify uh if you are getting the higher value or you are getting the uh, little bit values okay that is the point so if you are getting the small amount of the value then you can manage 
it means it is it is written over here we can might uh, or we can uh, might want to bump so no issue right now but we are getting the huge difference it means there is a uh, there is a not good idea there is no good no good idea to use a table differences at the first uh, track that is my point so this is what this is the point we have over here and which is knowing to you about the temporal differences so uh, main examination uh, i can ask the some questions uh, from the temporal difference uh, explain temporal differences in better way manner and uh, uh, what is what would be the value of uh, this one so please please do the take care of this point right now temporal differences under the uh, under the reinforcement learning and rest of the part of the its previous part we have discussed that could be understood by only the uh, numerical or the under the theoretical portion so i will share some questions on the assignment and lab activity so lab activity why because just i need to check your performance uh, while i will consider your viva so i need to check your con um, performance in the lab activity so that is uh, my point but what uh, i'm talking about i'm talking about the assignment so assign the assignment i will share the some some numerical question and some theoretical question because uh, i am not interested to share the total thing okay so in the lab in the assignment to do i will share some questions which will be followed by the numerical portion so please uh, on, by the honesty you people are required to solve the questions i will give you some enough time don't worry okay so this is the point 